Mark Cadre Lamont's rise to the top of the league content sphere is one that, on the surface, appears to have been seemingly random and out of nowhere in the last couple of years as his content has exploded across all mediums, especially in the past few months. And even just a few years ago, if you had told anyone that this camera-shy H2K mid laner would one day rise to the top of league content fame, it would be unlikely they would have believed you or even considered this as a possibility. As, after all, Cadre himself couldn't even anticipate being in the position he is now, considering that for a while there during his professional career, he considered himself to be in one of his lowest points ever mentally with an uncertain future ahead of him. Yet the Cadrill of today is now pulling insane viewership across multiple platforms, and his content's adaptability has led him into the eye of millions of League fans across the world. Today, I'll be bridging the gap between these two very separate paths as well as breaking down the techniques that Cadrill used to propel himself to gaming startup, and I suppose there's no better place to begin than by quickly recapping his time in the professional scene. Turning back time to almost 9 years years ago, Cadrill's humble pro play origins began officially on May 13th, 2015 as he would be announced as the mid laner for Experience Esports Club, a now non-existent Spanish esports organization. He would only play for the organization for a couple of months and then bounced around various teams and levels of play until finally landing a spot on Shulka Nulfir in 2017, which included players such as a young Upset and Norskera Nuo in the bot lane. And along with his teammates, Cadrill helped lift the Shulka organization into the EU LCS through winning promotion matches concluding with a 3-0 sweep over the team Ninjas in Pajamas. However, Cadrill's most infamous moment would come the very next season following this qualification as, during the offseason, he was slotted as the starting mid laner for H2K headed into 2018. And perhaps it was the nerves of being on stage or just an unfortunate misinput, but either way, in his very first game on the roster, Cadrill locked in Malzahar and, though he initially seemed to have found a great pick onto the enemy Ezreal, disaster struck. This is the tense moments, Vettius, as we enter the mid-game. 2k gold lead for Vitality. 1-1 one one in the towers, a dragon advantage as well. Ready to take a fight. Flash over. How do you... Just cancelled. Wait. That was... Cadrill the... just cancelled it. Though obviously this blunder of a player needs no real explanation, years later during an interview with the Score Esports, Cadrill would later go on to say that this misplay struck deeper than just an inability to lock down the enemy Ezreal. During this time, he recalled having some serious mental struggles, and even though this play wouldn't have been too impactful on the overall game state, it would go on to affect his mental state, which would hamper his ability to perform on a professional level. No longer properly firing on all cylinders, Cadrill's gameplay began to slowly deteriorate as a mid laner, and after an unsuccessful successful attempt as a starting jungler, he would be moved to the substitute jungler role for the remainder of the split. Over the summer, Cadrill temporarily acted as a starting jungler across different teams, including a brief stint on the aforementioned ninjas in pajamas, before finally returning to H2K's starting lineup as their starter for the rest of the year. However, headed into the 2019 season, Cadrill would finally leave H2K for good, as he was brought on to be a member of XL, a team he would remain on all the way through the end of 2020. Despite the roster being a bit of a revolving door due to the team's poor performances, Cadrill remained as the team's starting jungler for the course of the next two years and began to come more into his own as a player. He's actually there, Crisis disengaged this, it's down to 2,000, Cadrill you gotta get in there, it's secured, Cadrill gets it, he smites it away! However, though 2020 would of course be a very notable year for a wide variety of reasons, perhaps the most significant turning point in Cadrill's story was his beginnings as both a caster and content creator during that year's worlds. Cadrill, like many pros, had always done some content on the side to a small but reasonably sized audience, but crucially, his transitioning to an analyst after a repeated 7th place finish from Excel would change the output and frequency of his own personal brand and identity. By opting to become an analyst, Cadrill's digital presence shifted away from just being the person who currently played jungle champions on XL and instead pivoted towards a person who was a personality, had an on-screen presence that wasn't just a player cam, and broke down games from the perspective of a former professional player. In fact, that last part is one of the four major factors I've concluded to be behind Cadrill's immense popularity and deserved success, so let's talk about that first. Now, Cadrill by no means was the first person to successfully transfer from player to the analyst desk because, after all, take someone like Deficio, for example, who became a broadcast staple after completing his professional career. Career. Where these two differentiate, however, is while Officio would ultimately opt to take a more managerial role such as his position in Misfits Gaming, Cadrill opts to grow his brand as an individual by focusing on his career as a content creator. Cadrill's ability to simply break down concepts from a professional player's perspective was a unique skill that he brought to the desk which pleased fans so much that he was ultimately brought on to cast the LEC in 2021 after parting ways with XL. We saw the animation of a T 
TF red card up here in top lane, so I'd love to see the replay of that cancel. You do have a lot of experience with cancels, so we'll see if we can get it back up for you, Kajor. But even outside of producing content as a contracted caster, Kajor grew his unique perspective across YouTube and Twitch, captivating viewers, including myself, with his immensely high game knowledge and inside perspective that couldn't be offered by many others. In the early days of his channel, rather than his current co-stream commentary, Kajor instead gave many presentations and breakdowns around concepts that had occurred in games that fans had just watched in the previous 24 hours or so. Essentially, if someone wanted to know how a team threw a lead, grew their advantage, or outdrafted their opponents, Kajol, who was someone who was on the broadcast of said games, could explain it for them on his own shortly afterwards in a way that actually made sense and would help develop their overall understanding of the game. He became a trusted source for fans of League Esports to have their questions about pro play answered from an actual pro player. Though initially as a professional player, Kajol wasn't a fan of being in front of the camera, one of his biggest features that would ultimately grow him as a face in the league scene would be his immensely passionate personality. In his initial videos as a content creator and even on stream, Kajol began with generally more reserved, thoughtful mannerisms which, while appealing to some, didn't necessarily lead to the most viral moments all the time. However, operating under the assumption that these reservations were a result of nerves, as Kajol began to become more entertainingly expressive, naturally he became much more appealing to a broader audience. After all, who creates a rap video about an obsession with an LPL top laner or gives so many chef's kisses to the point that it feels like watching an Amarant stream or does whatever this is. What is that? <laughs> And while this increased expressiveness may make it seem as if the content would suffer within its quality, it actually just made it better and more popular simultaneously. And even to those who aren't necessarily too interested in the professional scene of League, it's still entertaining to watch a streamer hurdle his couch, bounce his chair frequently, or react in ways that are, in reality, hard for some to publicly share. Drawing in more fans enticed by this more exaggerated behavior, K-Troll's following have adopted similar habits of being a little bit of gremlins from time to time, spreading even into the more mainstream League sphere, which of course course will ultimately point viewers back to Kajrel. And in fact, all this only furthers a narrative that Kajrel's content is an approachable option for the average player who wants to have their favorite team's gameplay broken down as discussed previously. And one thing that's further enabled these over-the-top reactions and therefore Kajrel's success is his incredibly popular clips channel, capturing these viral moments while entering his name into the market of short-form content. After beginning uploading on his clips channel on October 26, 2021, Kajrel now officially had consistently uploading landing pages for for people to find the three major forms of video content. A Twitch page for his live streams, a YouTube page for more informative, long form, but still engaging content, and now a Clips channel for those who may be more inclined to just watch his most entertaining bits. Adaptability has been something Kajrel has especially succeeded in outside of his multiple channels, as his forms of creating content have varied throughout the last few years while still remaining around the same premise. While his casting career was initially what promoted him into the public eye and was of course something Kajrel really enjoyed doing, during Worlds 2023, Kajrel announced that he would be retiring from casting games and instead become an officially partner co-streamer full-time. If we were to focus on this move solely from the content viewing perspective as a consumer, this decision was, to put it lightly, an absolute win for Kajrel and his rat fanbase. Viewership on his main channel videos went from an impressive 100,000 or so views a video to doubling to around 200,000 views on average, with some videos hitting numbers such as 400,000, 600,000, and the series between T1 and JDG having over 1 million views. And a lot of the success of this adaptation from Kajrel can of course be accredited to his excessive fanboying of the shy, once again reiterating the importance of this personality and funneling plenty of clips for his short form content audience to enjoy. But even since Worlds has concluded, his content has maintained higher viewership than it did previously and the rate at which it's being released is nothing short of impressive. Kajrel's editors and thumbnail designers are so fast at their jobs and as an editor and video producer myself, I have nothing but immense respect to his team which has been second to none in their efforts. And as for Kajrel himself, his diligence is the sole reason that this content is even able to be produced so quickly and so frequently in the first place. Having been a professional player for years before entering the content game, Kajrel is no stranger to the grind it takes to get to the top, and with this year promising even more content than ever, he and his team show no signs of slowing down. And even as of writing this video, Kajrel has even just been signed to Fnatic as a content creator, granting him the ability to co-stream the LEC on top of his already planned streams of the LCK and LPL. Kajrel truly is a one in a million person with this level of grind, determination, and pure passion for what he loves combined with the likable personality that really channels the inner feelings we all have sometimes as league players. Yet at the same time, his execution of his content is informative, brilliant, and ahead of the curve and of course has led him to previously unfathomable but 100% deserved success. And if you'd like to support me as a small content creator, subscription would of course be greatly appreciated and feel free to let me know if there
there are any elements you think I may have missed in my analysis. Or if you want to keep posted on all the amazing content I have lined up for this year, feel free to hang out with me on my socials, which are all linked down below. But yeah, with that being said, have a great rest of your day or night. Take care. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.